classic YouTube intro. What's up, everyone? I've been on a... watching a lot of YouTubes lately, and I've realized, fuck! You're gonna hear that Discord message. I, I'll edit that into a meow or something. Um, <laughs> what I've basically realized after watching just some top tier channels like Michael Reeves and William Osman. Fuck it. This is a new segment because you know I love making new segments. It is called the After Work Build Series. You can expect bad hair, weird shirts, some cool builds. For my first build, we're gonna make another LED pendant, this time using fiber optic wire and I just got some new 4 millimeter fiber optic wire suggested from my friend on Instagram. I'll like put them like there or something. I don't know how that works. I'll figure it out by the time I edit this video. But yeah, I got this fiber optic wire. What's up? Ah. One's clear. That one's white. One's clear. We're gonna make a pendant out of this. Let's jump into it. Alright, well, first I gotta choose which of these fiber wires I wanna use. The clear one or the white one. I think I wanna use the clear one, but I'm not really sure. So, I printed out this rail, and the LED strip will fit inside of this rail really nicely. So, just get this taped down to the desk. And now I also 3D printed these little clips and they are just perfect size holes I think or they were unless these are two different size filaments so I did order the four millimeter clear but there's a half a millimeter sheath around it and I don't know if the sheath is necessary and making it light up, but I felt I should just keep it. In the end, I have these little clips that will fit on the rail, and they fit right on top of the LED. And I snap in, boom, you can just go and fit the wire right in the holes. That way, you have nice. Nice fits. Well, so they both actually pull the light in the camera pretty well. I'm actually surprised. Because the white one to my eye. So the left one to me, this one, I guess the right one to the camera, um, it looks, looks so, so pale. So I'm surprised that in the camera it looks so good, whereas this one, this one looks way better. Oh, there we go. Today we're going to do, uh, most of the wiring. We don't need that many pieces, so, uh. Yeah, I thought I was going to plug more jokes there, but I couldn't think of any. Let's just do this. Alright, there we go. <sighs> Boom. Alright, so this stuff is going inside the pendant. This is used to flash this guy right here. So this is... An ESP01, this is the brain and what's going to host the Wi-Fi that we connect to. It's going to connect to the LED strip, and that's where it's going to get its power from. This is a buck converter, or a step-down converter. And this is going to make sure that we maintain at 
3.3 volts max which it's really annoying that I have to use one of these and I'm kind of questioning if I do because this battery puts out 3.7 volts and I honestly think I'd probably be fine just directly connecting the battery up to the ESP01 but these things are so small and they fit together so nicely that I said what the hey we're, we're gonna live it up the way I solder these pieces together is by first bending the ESP01 ground pin 90 degrees and soldering it to the buck converter ground pin the two pins that need to be powered on the ESP01 are one pin apart Thankfully, the middle pin won't be used in this build, so it can be bent out of the way. I bend the two pins that need to be powered together, creating a TP above the unused middle pin. I solder these to a little piece of wire and connect the other end of that wire to the out pin on the buck converter. And now to power up this whole little system, I will connect power leads to the buck converter's power in and ground pins. Lastly, solder a lead wire from the GPIO pin on the ESP01 and that will be used to drive the LEDs. Quickly touch a battery to the leads of ground and power off the buck converter and make sure the red light turns on on the ESP01. Next up is to solder the ESP01 and buck converter to the LED strip. Solder ground and power in ports from the buck converter to the start of the LED strip. Solder the GPIO pin from the ESP01 to the data pin also at the beginning of the LED strip. Then at the end of the LED strip, we're going to solder on a ground and VIN lead, which will be connected to the battery. I do this to separate the battery and the computer, since they are the two bulkiest parts of this build. Another reason why we put the battery at the end of the LED strip is so that each of the LEDs has full access to the voltage of the battery before it gets dropped down by the buck converter, which is keeping the voltage at 3.3 so the ESP01 doesn't fry. All right, everyone. Today is day, I'm not even sure, this is taken a little bit longer than I expected, but it is a good day. Today is build day. We're gonna put this thing together. Pretty sure all the parts work. So all I have to do is assemble this thing and we should have a nice light up fiber optic pendant. Can we build it? Yes, Sorry my voice is a little raspy. I lost it last weekend. First things first, let's set the LED strip inside the pendant, put the microchip into its seat, and lay the strip inside the bed. Take the two wires and thread them on either side of the necklace loop. None of this part has to be glued into place because the fiber optic clips will hold the strip. Second, we're going to solder on the battery plates. The battery box holes are small, so we have to thread the lead wires into it before we solder on the plates. It is standard to use the spring plate to be negative, or in this case ground, and the positive to be connected to VIN. Both of these will be connected to the buck converter. Now that we solder the plates, we can glue everything into place. Unfortunately my camera died during the first half of the gluing, but all I did was glue the battery box onto the base. Now I'm gluing the plates to the side of the battery box to finish up this section. To secure the top and the bottom, all it takes is this one clip. The top and the bottom have feeds that are half width, which we'll add some super glue to. Add a little super glue on the outside where the clip will slide, and wiggle the clip down into place. Now you will have one solid pendant. Setting the fiber clips is boring and tedious work, 
So I'll save you some time and only show you the last one, which is the most difficult due to the placement of the microchip. We'll scoot the microchip out of the way, slide the fiber wire through the top hole, and set the clip. The clip is a tight fit, so I use some pliers to get it into place. Finally, snip the extra lengths off the top of the fiber wire, and you will have one completed fiber optic pendant. It felt weird ending this video without a closing statement, so thanks for watching, and I'll have more coming your way soon. If you have any questions about this build, leave them in the comments below. I'll leave all the relevant links in the description, and I just want to say thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time. That wasn't bad.